what are people getting wrong when it comes to campaign structure? Um, and I'll start with two things. The first thing is that they don't have a strategy or a method to how they're how they're launching their campaigns. They don't have uh, clear naming conventions. Every campaign name is kind of named slightly differently or uh, anything. And so it gets confusing whenever you're just looking at a campaign level, like uh, what is actually going on in this campaign because it's it varies across all my different campaigns. So they have no strategy. Um, there's no like rhyme or reason to like which campaigns are trying to do what. There's no like goals associated with some of these campaigns. And um, if you have that base strategy, which is what I kind of want to get to and share with everybody today is if you have that base strategy, you always kind of have something to start with and, and you have options and you can kind of pick and choose based on the situation, which campaigns are most important for your goals. So first things first, you have to have some sort of method. You have to have a process, a system that you're going to use and replicate across your account, across your products that is uh, systematized really. Um, and then the second thing that I see a lot is uh, people still using a lot of uh, multi-product ad groups or some people call them catch-all campaigns. This is one that I see a lot. Um, catch-all campaigns are good uh, in a very limited context. I wouldn't say that catch-all campaigns should be your entire strategy. Um, I kid you not, I was in an account uh, just a few months ago and I was looking through and the person had five campaigns. They were all auto campaigns. And the first one was like, catch all campaign one, catch all campaign two, catch all campaign top sellers, catch all campaign holiday keywords. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, and that was their whole, like, that was it. That was all there was. Um, and which is kind of crazy to me, just knowing the information that's out there on the internet that, that uh, you're sharing through this podcast and um, everything like that, that people aren't kind of picking up that those catch-all campaigns cannot be your go-to strategy. Those can't be kind of your core base strategy. Um, and in general, I kind of lean on uh, the base approach of single product ad groups. This is kind of a starting point. Um, and then we can kind of branch off from there. But single product ad groups are when you have uh, you know, a campaign and then you have your ad group and then just one product inside of that ad group. And so this gives you a lot of different controls where if you had all your products in one ad group, you wouldn't be able to do certain things. So for example, if you have everything segmented at the ad group level, all your products at the ad group level, then you would be able to see how one product converts on a specific keyword, conversion rates, revenue per clicks, versus another product, how it compares on that same keyword. Now, if, so this number one, gives you that ability to control the specific product to keyword relationships. So maybe one product has a better conversion rate on this keyword, and this one doesn't have as good of a conversion rate. So you can bid a little bit more, be more aggressive on the one that has higher conversion rates and bid a little bit more conservatively and not spend as much on the, on the product that doesn't have as good a conversion rates for that keyword. When you had all your products in the same ad group, you'd basically just be bidding equivalently for both of those products on that one keyword. And so you don't have that, that control to really hone in and, and get precise. And this, this uh, lack of segmentation can lead to wasted spend and that inability to see how you're actually wasting spend when it comes to uh, the specific performance that products are producing on uh, any given search term. So single product ad groups is uh, really you know, a place to start. And uh, there are situations where you know, maybe it makes sense to add more than one product to an ad group. I would say in general, though, those are only in cases when I'm dealing with ASINs and catalogs that exceed, you know, 2000 ASINs or, or more. So, um, you know, I have, I have accounts that have 30,000 ASINs and the approach and the structure that we're deploying for that campaign might look a little bit different than what I would do on an account that has 100 products. Mm -hmm. Simply due to just the volume of campaigns that you would run into um, could be, could be uh, quite a bit more. Um, if you're, you know, going down like a single product campaign route, you can't really scale that for 30,000 ASINs. I mean, I think Amazon has a limit of 10,000 campaigns. Um, you can obviously request to, to get more, but, uh, I imagine most people aren't hitting those numbers in terms of number of campaigns, but, uh, yeah, I, I could see, um, a, a case for, um, 
putting multiple products in an ad group in those large catalog scenarios. So how do you treat the variations? So if you have, and also think about the scenario where variations have different price points. So it's not necessarily the same price and not necessarily the same spec either in terms of like, it could be you know, like I have a client, they sell floor covers. So they have the, it's, it's an epoxy floor uh, kit and they have variations and between the variations, they have different colors and also mm -hmm. they have different sizes. So it's basically two sizes, five different colors, so it's 10 variations. So obviously the, the one that covers a smaller square footage is cheaper. Mm -hmm. and the one that covers more square footage is more expensive. So when you set up the PPC campaign, you would want to put the lower price one, but at the same time, that will then mislead, so to speak, to say, you know, this is the only size available. So how do you deal with variations where there are different price points and different attributes? Yeah, this is this is a great point. Um, even a, a better case to be made there for uh, segmenting your products at, at minimum and ad group level. Uh, those those products have different price points, different average order values. Therefore, we can afford to spend differently on those two different products based off of our target A costs. And so, um, as a base, you know, having those segmented at a uh, product or ad group level is is step one. And there's a couple of reasons why. Like, let's say you know you mentioned you have variations that have different colors of of floor mats. Let's say one of them's black and one of them's brown. Uh, what if one of them performs really good on brown carb or floor mat and doesn't uh, convert very well for a black floor mat? You'd want to be able to manipulate where you're spending and allocating more. So I could go into that brown floor mat ad group. I could increase bids on brown floor mat for that one and maybe decrease bids on the black. You know what I'm saying? So you have that control over that product to keyword relationship. And so this, this breakout allows uh, that segmentation. 